what is happening YouTube. So the NBA trade deadline is going to be next month. And the Clippers have not been doing pretty well. And and there are, there are a lot of reports that the, the Clippers definitely want to make a trade. Lots of fans want to make a trade. And in this video, I'm just going to be discussing the trade options that Clippers fans has been saying. And I'll pretty much give you which one is my favorite to go for. So with that due, let's, let's address one of the elephants of the rooms. And it's Mike Conley. Mike Conley, I'm not the biggest fan to go after for. Yes, Mike Conley did pretty good. He could shoot the ball. But he's 35 years old. And I'd be hearing a lot of people wanting to trade too much for Mike Conley. People went as far to trade a first-round pick or Brandon Boston Jr. Or pretty much more players that... You should be trading for. And I am not with that. I'm not the biggest fan whatsoever. And let's compare Mike Conley's stats with John Wall. So Mike Conley, he pretty much got 28 minutes at, at his lowest. And yeah, like if you look at the stats, it looks really good. But the thing is, he's getting more minutes. And remember, he's 35 years old, so he's easily washed. While you compare that with John Wall, he would get 15 minutes occasionally. Yes, he turns the ball over, and he's more of a worse shooter than Mike Conley. But Mike, if like if John Wall has 30, 30 minutes a game, I could definitely easily see him average 15 and a 7 assists. So the Mike Conley and John Wall um, talent level is... Is pretty much as is closer than a lot of people would think, in my opinion. And just take a look at the stats again: 22 minutes versus near 30 minutes. And you know, pretty much Wall has more blocks, and he, I'm pretty sure he would get more steals than Mike Conley for sure. And Wall also he's more stronger as well too, so less likely that he would get bodied. So. It's a really unpopular opinion, opinion, but I would rather have John Wall. I would rather ride with John Wall than just trade for Mike Conley. I'm not the biggest fan for just you know to, to just get one good year and be garbage after, unless if you have a plan or the the Jazz gives us something good. But now let's address another player, Fred Van Fleet. Fred Van Fleet, I heard that um, the, he wants $100 million, which would pretty much mess up the cap space. And Fred Van Fleet, his value is pretty high, too high that the, the Clippers should trade trade for. So pretty much, all right, I'm going to give the limits, in my opinion, the, the players that the Clippers should not trade, and especially not trade in a deadline. Kawhi, Paul George. B.J. Boston, Diabate, and Terrence Mann. I would also not want to trade Roko too, unless if it's a, for a really good upgrade. And also, I would not want to trade Luke Kennard or Norman Powell as well too in a trade deadline. I would much rather use one of them during the, the NBA draft because I believe the NBA draft is filled with bunch of future all-stars that will be an immediate impact for the Clippers. There are so many good power forwards and point guards that would help the team. The Clippers could get a really good point guard in Tyrese Proctor with our own draft pick, or heck, maybe if we're even bad enough, we could get Terquavion Smith out of, um, I forgot what, what school, he, oh, North Carolina, or we could get Kaysen Wallace out of Kentucky. Very good options. I would rather take these three guys over Fred Van Fleet, in my personal opinion. And also, you got really high motor power forwards that we could use to train over power for, like Taylor Hendricks or a really athletic center in Khalil, where out of Oregon. So, that's just my personal two cents. And the Clippers should not trade too, too much um, valuable assets during. Um, the trade deadline. I believe the Clippers should try to kind of like 
make some tweaks to fully maximize the roster. And there are so many people that are pretty much in the trade market that they're that are a little bit too low. So I believe the Clippers should go for the last two slides. But but that's just in my opinion on Fred Van Fleet. Pascal Siakam. I hear a lot of people want to go for Pascal Siakam as well too. And trading Pascal for Pascal Siakam or a third star like a Damian Lillard or a Kyle Kuzma or or Miles My- Turner. They're definitely going to include Boston Jr. and Terrence Mann. And doing that is equivalent of in taking steroids. When you take steroids, you feel good, you get strong, but in the long run, you messed up. Let's just say we trade for Pascal Siakam. And we trade Boston Jr., man, all your first-round picks, and whoever the heck they want. The best-case scenario, you win one or two rings at, at most, and then you're pretty much going to suck for pretty much the next 10 years if the Clippers like don't find another good steal because it's somewhat hard to find a draft steal. And the, the most... The most likely you're getting a steal is this year's draft or maybe next year's draft. And and pretty much you don't want to have a future like the Brooklyn Nets. It is definitely not worth it. I'm not willing to dig myself a hole because let's be real. You win one or two ring and then you become garbage for 10 years. People are not going to really remember that, that one or two rings. It's not going to be as meaningful when you endure the 10 years of of suffering. So I'm not willing to trade the youth in my personal opinion. And a lot of people are, are probably going to disagree, but, you know, you just got to think. You got to think all around. You got to think um, the bigger picture. And, yes, Boston Jr., I'm aware that he's been shooting a little bit inefficiently, but my counter argument is that's just – all scores. Um, Bones Highland, he would go two for 13, two for 10. He went one for five at times when he got the same minutes as Boston Jr. So, and people say Highland's the rising star. So, but when it's Boston Jr., um, people, they definitely crucify the living heck out of him. And I believe, um, the Clippers should run plays through Boston Jr. when he actually plays. Use him as a wing scorer because when you do that, you would get Boston Jr. when he plays against the Boston Celtics. And that's just what I got to say. Musa Diabate has been pretty impressive as well too. Very good motor. And in theory, Isaiah Hartenstein... Getting rid of Isaiah Hardenstein, or, or no, we didn't get rid of Hardenstein, obviously, but um, Hardenstein going to the Knicks shouldn't have been a problem if Tyloo just regularly, regularly used Musa Diabate as the backup big. I personally think Diabate is the better option than Hardenstein because Diabate has a really good motor, while Hardenstein, um, he's more, he's, he's more like has more of a bigger body frame and he's probably slightly a better playmaker but Diabate has a better motor and which means he would have better defense and he brings more of the ferocious energy so I would just rather have Hartenstein pretty much I mean not Hartenstein uh, Diabate is the main backup big and maybe the Clippers could sign like a third string backup big just in case both of them goes down um Moses Brown also I feel he's getting um, he's getting less credit than he should. Uh, Moses Brown, yes, he's pretty slow at times, but and plus, like he's pretty stiff and he's not the best at setting screens. But, but he's definitely far from garbage. But of course, we would I would rather have Diabate be the the primary backup big. And Tyloo, he's kind of, he's been messing with Boston Juniors and Diabate rhythm and he's not giving them consistent minute that's why they look like they're struggling look at cam reddish cam reddish i think he's a pretty pretty good player but 
Thibodeau, he doesn't they, he does not want to give them minutes. And heck, he's in this list that I would actually want the Clippers, the Clippers to go after. Now, a, a player that I would definitely be open to going for is Nas Reed if they don't ask for Boston Jr. Diabate man and pretty much I won't hate it if the Clippers do include a first round pick for Nas Reed but definitely got to protect that pick and that's just my opinion but Nas Reed he brings energy he's pretty quick he's 24 years old the weakness though is he would get bodied down low but at the same time he does bring energy, and he could definitely be an upgrade of a rebounder than Marcus Morris because Marcus Morris, lately, he hasn't been been rebounding pretty well. And if we maybe just Morris and Amir Coffey and maybe a second-round pick for Nas Reed, that could definitely be a nice steal for the Los Angeles Clippers. So I'm definitely open for Nas Reed, but I don't know. I think his trade value could have possibly just went up as well, too. So that's um, that's another factor. And then, Cam Reddish. Cam Reddish. I heard the Knicks are willing to just trade him for a second rounder. So, I'm all ears for that. I'm definitely all ears for that. And if we do get Cam Reddish just for a second rounder, and maybe, I don't know, um, just like a Jason Preston, Preston or Amir Coffey, like if we get if we do a mega steal, then heck, we could probably just flip Marcus Morris to a team for a next year first round pick and that would be an ultimate um, chess move because Cam Reddish, he just needs to, to have plays run through him. Same with Boston Jr. Give Boston Jr. more the ball, please, Tyloo. Have him shoot the ball because the more he shoots, the more likely he's going to go off. And going back with Reddish, he would also bring defense as well, too. He's more agile on defense, and he could probably rebound the ball decently well. And especially in the pick and roll, Reddish would be pretty good at, at defending. And pretty much he would also contest the threes, the three-pointers as well, too. So Cam Reddish, he's kind of one of my favorite options to go after. And then... Last but not least, Rui Hachimura. Rui Hachimura, I believe he can be an ultimately high reward if we go for Rui Hachimura. Rui Hachimura, um, the Washington Wizards were willing to trade this guy for Jay Crowder. If that's the case, then I'm willing to flip Marcus Morris for Rui Hachimura because... Rui is a lot younger, he's more athletic, um, and he's 24 years old, and I heard people say he's a quick learner, and Pascal Siakam, he didn't break out till he was 25 years old, and people went as far to say Rui Hachimura is the next Kawhi, if that is the case, then holy smokes, then the Clippers should definitely be all ears for Rui Hachimura, and they could... And I can see the Wizards being pretty interested with Jason Preston as well, too, since the Wizards don't have a point guard, and Preston could definitely be a really good attraction for for that. And then the Wizards are probably just going to give up Rui Hachimura just like within a finger snap. And yes, I'm aware he shot 0 for 7 last game, but Morris had a lot of games like that, too. And at least Hachimura, he brings. He brings athleticism as well, too, and he's more quicker. And people even went as far to say he's, he's the next Kawhi, so. And we're and we could, and we're definitely going to get him for low, too. And if we get Cam Reddish and, or Rui Hachimura or any really young players for low, I would definitely be willing to, to go after that. And that's why I would like to go for Reddish or Hachimura just because... Um, you're not going to give up too much, but you could definitely get a high reward in return, and you could save all the other assets for something even bigger. Bigger, But let me know who else you want the Clippers to go after or what type of changes that the Clippers should make. Please be sure to leave a comment 
like and subscribe and I would definitely try to my best to have a conversations with y'all in the comment sections but but like I said take care have a great day and thank y'all really much for tuning in appreciate it